Gentlemen in the blue, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I'm Alex from Doctor Who, Who's on Target podcast. I've got two questions for you. Can we know a bit more about the Christmas episode? <laughs> and um, what, I know it might be a bit young for Gemma, but what is your favourite Target book? Right, that second one's probably from me, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, how are you on the Target books? Uh, I'm not really, uh, I, 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 I bought about four. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been sent many, many of them from the last couple of months. I, I can't answer those questions. Uh, the, 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 uh, my favourite Target book is Doctor Who and the Daleks by David Whittaker, uh, which I am photographed reading with ferocious concentration when I was about eight or something. Then I was about to learn. So that was brilliant. That's an amazingly good book. And actually, David Whittaker was an amazing writer. Uh, he sort of rewrites, he's so masterful with it, he rewrites Doctor Who history. He decides, oh, I'm not sure about that first episode with the man and the guy, and all the all the caveman stuff. He throws it all out and has to start with the Daleks, which, to be honest, is a very good correction. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I, I, I like that one. What was the first part of the question? Christmas. Christmas. I want to tell you about Christmas. We're going to explain Christmas to you in great spoiler-tastic detail <laughs> towards the end of Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> About that uh, David Whittaker adaptation, actually, in pre target days, that's where I used to peruse it, just getting the illustrations to look back and see the line drawing. Thank you for your question. We'll come to this gentleman in the front here, but there's one right at the very back there. Hello. So, where did you really get the idea for bringing Davros back? Well, when I was very young, I watched Genesis of the Daleks and began a long plan. Um, what did I, um, do you know, I was... Davros already, already had returned within the new series. I, I, was, I was doing what I do in my spare time which is watch old episodes of Doctor Who, because I really know how to kick back and relax. Uh, and it occurred to me, and I think this is just true, I'm sure you see it here, there isn't a bad scene between the Doctor and Davros. Whatever you think of the stories, and I think they're all good, uh, but all the time, every time you have the Doctor confronting Davros uh, in, in the classic series and in the, and, and the new series, hopefully that's true as well on this one, I'm not randomly voting. Uh, every time they, they meet, it's really quite electric. There's something about those two characters meeting. So I wanted, I wanted to have a go at it. The other thing was, what surprised me, looking back at the old stories, is how little screen time they have together. In Genesis of the Daleks, they have a couple of scenes. They're brilliant scenes. They're beautifully written and great. Beautifully done. But they're, they're very short. They're not long at all. I'd imagined it in my memory as being you know, most of the story. It wasn't at all. So I, uh, my notion was to actually stick them in a room together and see what happens after a long while. Uh, so that, that you know, a, a childhood ambition, which in my case hasn't changed into my 50s, but uh, <laughs> that is the story of my life. Thank you for your question, young man. And uh, somebody at the front here. Hello, my name's Robin, and I'm from Canada. My question is for Stephen. If you could do a live episode of Doc 2, what adventure would you do? <laughs> I think I'd give them the adventure of the next showrunner. <laughs> uh, and, I, and, I, and I wish them the best of luck and send them muffins and, and wine and a, a lovely card. I wouldn't do it. I'm going to be honest, I'd run like hell from that because I think, you know, the thing that what you don't know about Doctor Who is is the state it's in when we sign it off. You know, when we sign off an edit. You know, it's, wow. And then the post-production Doctor Who is like a whole other show. It's like a whole other show. Uh, and all these geniuses uh, come in, uh, uh, Milk and so on, and, and make it, and, and Murray Gold and, and the sound guys, and make it into this completely real world in a strange way Doctor Who can't ever waver. They'll look you in the eye and say, this really happened. 
and sometimes it's a stretch, let's be honest. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't like, personally, for me, a live episode, I'd always say it's just like, you know, so what, what do the audience care whether it's live or not? And that, that, that's the production team showing off. Uh, but in the case of Doctor Who, we would be denied the creative input of some of the best post-production people on the planet. And why the hell would I want to lose those guys? Brian, bring you in here. Thank you for your question. Just bring you in here then, Brian. Stephen yeah. says, you know, the state the show is in when it's handed to, say, post-production. Just give the audience an idea about how many people are working on that in post-production and when that would have gone into the edit and so forth. Uh, this will seem to have gone to the edit kind of end of March, and it looks kind of like 1970s Doctor Who at that stage with blue shoes and wobbly sacks and Except from Creeps, and he's got about between 30 and 40 people doing the CGI, sound teams of about 10, 15 editors. So it's a huge effort, and it's mainly done in BBC Wales here and in Milton Lambda. So it's, uh, and the interesting thing about Doctor Who is you're always finding ways to tell the story a bit clearer or a bit better. So someone had to sit there and invent what the sound of a half decayed Dalek sounds like when punched by a stick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just tap that into Google and find it. So you've got to, they can put together lots of animal noises. And, and for you guys, in, in front of the camera, for you, for you Peter as well, you know, obviously you filmed that a long time ago. Is it remarkable then when you're sitting back and you're watching the show go out and thinking, my God, I can barely remember filming that and seeing what the magic of the post-production have done to those scenes? Oh yeah, there's a big, big difference. I mean, it's thankfully, you know, because when I see uh, a copy of it with, with, with me, I'm like, I've got my head in my hands, I can't bear watching this. It's, it's all great, except for that guy who's playing Dr. Who. Uh, but then once they add music and special effects, it becomes a bit more bearable. Uh, but it's extraordinary to see the uh, the talent that's at work. I mean, it's, it, 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 it has this, now this, this, this epic sort of cinematic kind of quality to it which is just down to uh, hugely talented people being chosen and, and working, you know, often, you know, uh, way beyond the call of duty uh, because they love the show in order to make it look good. And Shannon, is it the same for you si sitting here and watching it in a, in a cinema as well? And, and as Peter says, and the show has evolved, it's grown, but it does not look out of place on a huge cinema screen. It doesn't. I mean, I have to say I love to watch it on on television. I, I love watching it when it's live and it's going out and you know other people are watching it as well. That's kind of, I think, I think the best way. But also it's good with distance and I think Doctor Who, it's because of what Murray does with the music. It's, um, you know, it's, it's so, it escalates it on the scale. It's, um, you know, it's not, it's not really right to watch it before the music and, and everything's added because, you know, it, it feels like it's the, it's the skeleton really before it's kind of all amped up. It's a bit of an act of self-belief. Before the snakes were there, <laughs> you were all reacting to empty space and it was writhing in an empty chair. You yeah. have to believe that <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be covered in so many snakes, it's all going to make sense. It's like a bonkers question, but do you watch the shows when they go out? Do you watch the shows on a Saturday evening as they go out? I always try to. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you can't, but I mean, I, I very rarely miss it. Sometimes you watch them together. <laughs> it's all about That's racism. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Try not to race it. Who's on Twitter out of you four as well? Peter, are you, have you embraced the world of social media? <laughs> Jenna, you are. I'm on Twitter. You now. are. Stephen? No. No. <laughs> no. Do, you follow, do you follow what people are doing, Jenna, on, on Twitter? Are you, are, you, are you watching? Because there are many people who work in TV and film who kind of. They do this dual screen, <laughs> where, 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 where almost like, you know, Doctor Who is trending, it's probably the most, the most trending mm -hmm. thing when it launches on the 19th of September. Will you click on the hashtag and see what people are saying? No, I won't. I think that's, I think, you know, you get kind of notifications that come up and things like that, but I think, um, I, I don't, no, I don't use it. I don't use it for that. I think um, that could be quite a, a wormhole to go into. It must be, you just have to watch it then. then.